Hey there. This video is about eyesight. And in particular, it's about how I have managed to reverse my short-sightedness and how I continue to do so. And I'm going to really go in depth so that you can see exactly what I've done and so that you can do the same. I can still remember the optician's appointments when I was told that I would need to wear glasses. I was just 19 years old and I'd spent the last three or four days just reading Henry Cornelius Agrippa, uh, sometimes late into the night. I initially actually went to the doctor because I was walking through the street and I realised I couldn't see the signs in the distance and this was sudden. When I went to the doctor, he too was rather surprised at how quickly this change in vision had appeared. And initially I could see some concern, but he, he phoned the optician and sent me in and they concluded I was just short-sighted. They explained that what had happened is my eye had grown uh, too long into an egg shape and this was genetic and that there was nothing I could do about it. I needed to wear glasses. Well, I found those glasses extremely uncomfortable. Didn't like having them on. It got in the way with things. Really, I found there was a sense of strain wherever I had them. And especially when it came to close-up work, I found that I wasn't comfortable with them on, but I wasn't comfortable with them off. I kept going back to my opticians and to my doctors. I asked them about different options. I asked them if there was anything else I could do. But each time I was told that this was a genetic condition and there was nothing that could change it. I reluctantly started to wear the glasses and eventually got used to them. But I, I never gave up. I tried the Bates method and eye yoga and I was always searching for something. I even looked into laser eye surgery, but concluded that the risks were too much. The eyes are so precious, I didn't really want anyone with a laser or a scalpel of any type near them. As I continued my journey through life, my prescription started to sneak up. It started off quite light. I could still see most things, just not things in the distance. But as time went on, it was added to and added to with each visit to the opticians. By the time I was in my mid-twenties, I was very short-sighted. Minus five diopters in one eye and just under in the other. If you're not short-sighted, it might be hard to picture what this is like. You can see people's faces, but you can't see who they are, what their expression is without going very close. Anything beyond arm distance is pretty hard to make out any detail on. Without glasses, you feel very vulnerable. Uh, you now need them just to function in the world. Around that time, I, I moved to contact lenses. And I really preferred those. Uh, they looked a lot better and I could see a lot better. My vision was superb when they were in. And that functioned very well for me until in my mid-30s when my job changed and it was a lot more close-up work and a lot more work on a, a computer and I found I started getting dry eyes. 
So I looked around for other options and I was very lucky to find a truly enlightened optician who offered Ortho-K. Ortho-K is when you have a hard lens that you put on your eye and go to sleep with them in. This hard lens reshapes the eye so that the front of it corrects the reflection of light uh, so that it's, it's in focus. It actually was first practiced with sandbags in uh, ancient China and this was a great solution for me. So during the day your eyes are corrected but you have to keep wearing these lenses overnight to, to keep reshaping the eye. Studies have actually shown that this stops that onset of increased myopia. Uh, children who use these lenses rather than contact lenses or uh, glasses, uh, their myopia isn't progressive. For many years I used this form of eyesight correction and was very happy with it. But it's in my nature to want to improve things and restore things naturally. So I was always interested in alternatives. And it was a great blessing when the alternative was presented to me by not one but two of my meditation students. They sent me different resources that showed me the truth behind human eyesight and how it can be corrected. One of these resources was a video called Myopia, a modern yet uh, reversible illness and it was a blog called Getting Stronger and um, this is Todd Becker and that video was just amazing to see. It really woke me up as to what was going on. The other one was um, End Myopia and um, I'll include links to both these resources. End Myopia is a website. Uh, Jake uh, runs this. Uh, you'll be able to see him on his YouTube channel. I'll, I'll link to that and um, it's got a three seven day course so do sign up to that. Um, and what was most exciting about both these resources was these were people who had reversed their myopia and it showed the conclusive scientific evidence as to what was causing myopia and how it could be reversed. So it turns out that human eyesight isn't quite as simple as people have been treating it. Um, so we have the lenses at the front of our eyes and we have these uh, ciliary uh, muscles, these muscles around the lenses which focus that lens. And the shape of the eye makes a difference to how much this lens can focus. Previously it's been thought, as I was told, that the shape of the eye is genetic and that if it's uh, misshaped to the degree that the eye is incorrectly calibrated you're going to need glasses or some other lenses or some um, form of corrective uh, therapy to make sure you can see clearly. Well it turns out uh, that we haven't fully understood the circumstance. Our eyes actually calibrate to what we do. So they interpret the need to correct a blur as a stimulus to reshape to what we're doing. So you can imagine um, if you were a, a, a tribesman out in the outback of Australia, your eyes might be a bit long-sighted because you're correcting that blur all the time looking into the distance. So your eyes would uh, 
become shaped so that you could see more into the distance. If you're close up in your lifestyle, if you're in front of a computer, they may reshape uh, to become a little bit uh, short-sighted. There are also some other factors at play here. Um, if you do a lot of close-up work, a spasm is created that means your eyes can't correct uh, your vision. They can't um, change the focus. Uh, this is spasm in the muscles. And there's, there's many studies that prove this. Too much close-up work can lead to a spasm which temporarily leads to short-sightedness which is, of course, what had happened to me. At the age of 19, reading that book uh, all the time, that had led to a spasm around my vision. And this spasm could have been corrected by some time practicing looking into the distance. So what I needed was a, a camping holiday, not some glasses. But unfortunately, the optician and doctor, they didn't understand that, so they prescribed some lenses. And here's where the trouble starts. The lenses induce further myopia. Um, again, if you sign up for the End Myopia course or you watch the videos and follow the links, you'll see the studies that prove this. Uh, this has actually been reproduced in animal models. Basically, the, the eyes know when you're doing close-up work with lenses in front of them, the, the light is being shone with a focus point behind your retina. So your eyes try to grow to, to adjust to this. So that's why your prescription keeps increasing. And in fact, in um, tests, they've managed to induce myopia in animals using lenses and get rid of myopia in animals using lenses. So this is very important. Myopia is a, a modern created illness caused by an imbalanced use of the eyes. Epidemiology shows that we only get the levels of myopia that we have in societies that have eight hours of education where it's all close up. In societies before reading and writing and maths training, you see it, it hardly ever occurs. So now we know the cause. We know that using the eyes in an imbalanced way, that leads uh, to a spasm or to some degree of maladaption. And the prescription of lenses, that over time exacerbates this and leads to severe short-sightedness. So armed with this information, what do we do? Well, I'll be honest with you, when I first learnt this, I thought about my life and my circumstances. And I knew that I had to change some things. But I wasn't sure how to go about it. I really contemplated what I was doing day to day with my eyes. And I realised something very powerful, an insight which really is the key to all this. I realised that I and all the other people who I knew who were short-sighted did almost exclusively short-sighted things. So I realised that my work was close up. I realised that most of my hobbies were close up. If I looked at what my eyes were doing over the day, they were probably spending 90% of their time focused close up. And I came to believe that as above, so below that the imbalance in the eyes was most certainly a reflection of an imbalance in life. All my goals were close up. All my goals were based on the idea of modern 
productivity. I needed to make some change. I needed to restore balance to my eyes, uh, to my personality and to my life. Now this would require creating the opposite stimulus. I needed to start my eyes working again on focusing more into the distance. And this was a tough thing to do because I already had perfect eyesight correction and it wasn't something I could make variable very easily. So I started to introduce changes. I went to my optician and explained to him everything that I'd learnt, showed him the science and it really took some time to convince him to under prescribe my eyesight correction and this initially took quite a bit of effort but as I said my optician is enlightened so in the end I, I managed to get lenses that made my eyesight better but just under prescribed. I then started to change my habits. I started to work uh, when I was close up so that my eyes were having to do a bit of work. Um, this would mean getting the computer and making sure it was just at the point where my eyes would have to focus a little bit. Initially it was like rehabilitating a, a limb that hadn't been used for years. I'm sure my eyes were completely jammed up. The, the lenses had been doing all the correction and the muscles didn't have to do much work. So I found I was actually tired all the time just from this small adjustment. I then started to introduce new habits. So in between um, my work on the computer I'd look into the distance. When I was out and doing things I'd practice looking into the vision. I'd practice active focus. And these two disciplines, the working at a, a distance which is called uh, print pushing, working at a distance that your eyes need to correct the, uh, the vision so that you can see the type, you can see what you're working on in my day-to-day -day life and practicing looking into the distance became automatic. I started finding other opportunities to look into the distance during my day. So when I was um, on the phone, instead of just looking at the computer or carrying on with things, I'd look as far as I can into the distance. I started trying to move my work towards more distance-based vision. So if I saw an email from someone, which would probably be better as a phone call anyway, I'd phone them, look into the distance. Likewise, I started to move my hobbies. Now, if you've followed this channel for a while, you know I don't have a television, so I already was well ahead of many people in this, but I did read and study a lot. I moved my interests into more distant based things. So instead of doing uh, exercise which would be close up, I'd do something which involved a distance, uh, practicing archery. Uh, instead of drawing things from imagination, I'd paint a scene in the distance. This time under tension for the eyes was a superb stimulus. During the first six to eight months of these changes I found my eyes were constantly tired. But pretty soon there was a marked improvement and initially the improvements were a lot faster. As time went on and these habits started to become permanent, my eyesight continued to improve. Sometimes in jumps, sometimes in smaller stages. Over 
three, maybe three and a half years of this practice, my short-sightedness has continued to decrease. And now, instead of minus five, I have prescription of a minus uh, two and minus 1.75 diopters. I've managed to get my vision a little bit better than it was when I started this journey at the age of 19. Uh, but I also believe there have been wonderful benefits to this. The balance in the eyes has been a reflection of the balance in my life. I spend a lot more time every day outdoors. I run every morning and during that run my eyes are naturally looking in the distance and focusing on things. When I sit uh, I practice my meditation out on the fens and I look into the distance with a relaxed vision, uh, sitting in oneness uh, with my vision of everything before me. This uh, means that my eyes have already got over two hours of distance vision every day before I even uh, start with other practices or hobbies. In addition to all this, Many of the other things I was doing, which were cutting me off from the outside world, have gone. Uh, sitting on a train, uh, instead of answering emails or texting or anything like that, I can see the beauty of the world going by. I can interact with others. Getting away from this myopic, modern, technological-centred world and embracing reality making your environment beautiful, exploring what is around you, going to actually see people rather than just sending them a message. This is a beautiful change in life and, and a wonderful blessing. Using these techniques, you too can bring this change into your vision, and into your life. You may find that when you see more clearly with your eyes, you see more clearly in other ways. Now, this is a slow and steady, gentle path. You can probably expect an improvement of 0.75 or um, half a diopter a year. It's taken a long time for short-sightedness to, to build up. It may take quite a while for it to reverse. Enjoy that beautiful journey. There may be challenges to certain aspects of your personality on the way. It may be that at the moment, the solution you've got for your eyesight correction is hard to under-prescribe. And it may be that you need to make some adjustments which get rid of some of the convenience. So, for example, if you're currently wearing contact lenses, your first goal is to, to work on a computer without those lenses. And that may require a, a different pair of under-prescribed glasses. You may need uh, to change what you're doing in order to make sure that you can challenge your eyes enough in both circumstances, when you're looking in the distance and when you're looking close up. This could require two different solutions, uh, a under-prescribed pair of glasses or lenses for distance for when you go out and an under-prescribed pair of uh, glasses or lenses for when you're working up close. This can be a challenge because it's not as convenient 
but we need to get rid of those old habits that created the short-sightedness in the first place. Namely, living a, a close-up life and having correction to your eyesight, which is designed to correct distance vision, before you when you're working close up. Uh, these two factors are really going to hold back any progress you make. Now, this is my own personal account. Uh, you can find others if you look at the resources below, which will give you a lot more information and complete scientific advice. Now, I must end, however, on a, a different note, one for those who normally view this channel. If we look at Initiation in Hermetics by Franz Baden, you will find there are some extra practices that he puts in there for your eyesight. And we can see this training as part of our, our soul mirror work. So we must utilize all the possibilities we have uh, before us to fully restore our eyesight. My name's Martin Folks, and I hope this video has been a use for anyone who wants to have clear vision on all levels. Until next time, let's let every word, thought and action count.